We're looking one more day at the attributes of God before we march on to uh, other issues concerning worship. And as we do, we're looking again at the um, omnipotence of God, the great power, the almighty God of the universe. Now, we're making application today. Uh, there's many, many applications I'm sure we could make if we sit down and brainstorm and talk it through. What, what are some of the ways in which the, the, the fact that God is almighty, all-powerful, what some of the ways it affects the way you live, the way you think, the way you process, the way you, you, you live with your family, the way you go to church, all these things. What, what difference does it make in your everyday life that God is all-powerful, He's om, omnipotent? Let me suggest three uh, right now, uh, today. And there's, like I said, there are so many, so many others that we could look at. First of all, it gives us confidence in life. Chapter 4 of Philippians and verse 13. It says this, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Now, that is not a catch-all phrase in which I can become a supernatural uh, football player or something because I'm a Christian. He's talking in a context partly of finances, that he can, can do all that God wants him to do, whether, whether he has a lot of money or not, just little amounts of money. And, and I think there's a broader connotation that all that God wants me to do, uh, I can do through him who strengthens me. I can't do these things on my own because of my own power, my own uh, abilities, my own wisdom. But through him who strengthens me, I can do all these things. So I can have confidence. I can have confidence that, that God can use my stumbling words, my uh, feebleness in life, my whatever's to his glory, because he's the one that energizes. He's the one that strengthens. He's the one that brings about that which he wants to bring about. And so I can have confidence in life. Uh, if I'm left to myself and my confidence is in me and in my abilities and whatever else I might gain, I'm going to be very insecure at times. The, the real answer to insecurity is Christ. Uh, that uh, we're, we're not self-sufficient, we're Christ-sufficient. And when we realize that, as, as Paul is saying here, that gives us confidence to be what God wants us to be and no more than what he wants us to be. We're confident in him. Let's take a look at another passage. We also have confidence in uh, a second thing, and that is in prayer. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, prayer. He says, now to him was able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or understand according to the power that works within us. Uh, have you ever thought about how feeble your prayers are? I, I think it, most Christians, myself included, if you would ask them what is the weakest point in your Christian life, what is the one thing, let's put it this way, what is the one thing you would like to improve? Uh, it would probably be our prayer life. Now we could look at other things, our behavior, our Bible study, various things, but but almost all Christians, no matter how spiritual and how godly and how accomplished in the things of the Lord they are, almost all are going to admit that they could do better at prayer. They're weak in their prayer life. And yet we find here that as Paul writes about going to him, we know that he can do abundantly beyond anything we could ask or think or understand. We know that our, our feeble prayers can be taken to him and he can use those prayers for his own purposes and for his own glory, according, it says, to the power that works within us. The power resides not in us per se, but in him who works in us. And therein lies his power. And then one more, how about Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39? We can have confidence also in salvation. At the end of this great section that deals with that subject, it says, verse 38, for Romans 8, 38, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a wonderful uh, closing verses for this great chapter that says nothing can separate us from the love of God. We can have confidence in salvation, not because we are going to persevere ourselves, but because he perseveres in us that he never allows anything to come between us and him once we belong to him. What a, what a confidence that gives us. What, what a hope, what, a, what a, a strength that gives us. What confidence to know that he will allow nothing 
to come between us and Him because of His omnipotence. Nothing is powerful enough to come between us and God. That ought to give us a wonderful day in the Lord.